Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Dalek The Daleks are a fictional extraterrestrial race of mutants principally portrayed in the British science fiction television program Doctor Who. The Daleks were conceived by science fiction writer Terry Nation and first appeared in the 1963 Doctor Who serial The Daleks, in the shells designed by Raymond Cusick. Drawing inspirations from the real-life example of the Nazis, Nation portrayed the Daleks as violent, merciless, and pitiless cyborg aliens, who demand total conformity to their will, bent on the conquest of the universe, and the extermination of what they see as inferior races. Within the program's narrative, the Daleks were engineered by the scientist Davros. During the final years of a thousand-year war between his people, the Kulds, and their enemies the Tulls, with some cults already badly mutated and damaged by a nuclear war. Davros genetically modified the cults and integrated them with a tank-like, robotic shell, removing their every emotion apart from hate. His creations soon came to view themselves as the supreme race in the universe, intent on purging the universe of all non-Dalek life. Collectively they are the greatest enemies of Doctor Who's protagonist, the Time Lord known as the Doctor. Later in the program's run, the Daleks acquired time travel technology, and engaged the Time Lords in a brutal time war affecting most of the universe, with battles taking place across all of history. They are the show's most popular villains and their various returns to the series, over the years have typically been widely reported in the television press. Their catchphrase, Exterminate, is a well-recognized reference in British popular culture. Creation the Daleks were created by writer Terry Nation and designed by BBC designer Raymond Cusick. They were introduced in December 1963 in the second Doctor Who serial, colloquially known as the Daleks. They became an immediate and huge hit, with viewers, featuring in many subsequent serials and two 1960s motion pictures. They have become as synonymous with Doctor Who as the Doctor himself and their behavior and catchphrases are now part of British popular culture. Hiding behind the sofa whenever the Daleks appear, has been cited as an element of British cultural identity, and a 2008 survey indicated that 9 out of 10 British children were able to identify a Dalek correctly. In 1999 a Dalek photographed by Lord Snowden appeared on a postage stamp celebrating British popular culture. In 2010, Readers of science fiction magazine SFX voted the Dalek as the all-time greatest monster, beating competition including Japanese movie monster Godzilla and J.R.R. Tolkien's Gollum of the Lord of the Rings. Entry into popular culture As early as one year after first appearing on Doctor Who, the Daleks had become popular enough to be recognized even by non-viewers. In December 1964 editorial cartoonist Leslie Gilbert Illingworth published a cartoon in the Daily Mail captioned, The Decauk, caricaturing French President Charles de Gaulle arriving at a NATO meeting as a Dalek with de Gaulle prominent nose. The word, Dalek, has entered major dictionaries, including the Oxford English Dictionary, which defines, Dalek, as, a type of robot appearing in Doctor Who a BBC television science fiction program, hence used elusively. But English speakers sometimes use the term metaphorically to describe people, usually authority figures, who act like robots unable to break from their programming. For example, John Burt, the director general of the BBC from 1992 to 2000, was publicly called a croak-voiced Dalek by playwright Dennis Potter in the McTaggart Lecture at the 1993 Edinburgh Television Festival. Physical Characteristics Externally, Daleks resemble human-sized pepper pots with a single mechanical eye stalk mounted on a rotating dome, a gun mount containing an energy weapon resembling an egg whisk, and a telescopic manipulator arm usually tipped by an appendage resembling a sink plunger. Daleks have been known to use their plungers to interface with technology, crush a man's skull by suction, measure the intelligence of a subject, and extract information from a man's mind. Dalek casings are made of a bonded polycarbide material dubbed Dalekanium by a member of the human resistance in the Dalek invasion of Earth and by the cult of Scarrow in Daleks in Manhattan. The lower half of a Dalek's shell is covered with hemispherical protrusions, or Dalek bumps, which are shown in the episode Dalek to be spheres embedded in the casing. Both the BBC licensed Dalek book and the Doctor Who technical manual describe these items as being part of a sensory array, 
Whilst in the 2005 series episode, Dalek, they are integral to a Dalek's self-destruct mechanism. Their armor has a force field that evaporates most bullets, and resists most types of energy weapons. The force field seems to be concentrated around the Dalek's midsection, as normally ineffective firepower can be concentrated on the eye stalk to blind a Dalek. Daleks have a very limited visual field, with no peripheral sight at all, and are relatively easy to hide from in fairly exposed places. Their own energy weapons are capable of destroying them. Their weapons fire a beam that has electrical tendencies, is capable of propagating through water, and may be a form of plasma or electrolaser. The eyepiece is a Dalek's most vulnerable spot. Impairing its vision often leads to a blind, panicked firing of its weapon while exclaiming, My vision is impaired. I cannot see. Russell T. Davis subverted the catchphrase in his 2008 episode, The Stolen Earth, in which a Dalek vaporizes a paintball that has blocked its vision while proclaiming, My vision is not impaired. The creature inside the mechanical casing is soft and repulsive in appearance and vicious in temperament. The first ever glimpse of a Dalek mutant, in the Daleks, was a claw peeking out from under a tile cloak after it had been removed from its casing. The mutant's actual appearance has varied, but often adheres to the doctor's description of the species in remembrance of the Daleks as little green blobs in bonded polycarbide armor. In resurrection of the Daleks a Dalek creature, separated from its casing, attacks, and severely injures a human soldier. In remembrance of the Daleks, there are two Dalek factions, and the creatures inside have a different appearance in each case, one resembling the amorphous creature from Resurrection, the other the crab-like creature from the original Dalek serial. As the creature inside is rarely seen on screen, a common misconception exists that Daleks are wholly mechanical robots. In the new series Daleks are retconned to be mollusk-like in appearance, with small tentacles, one or two eyes, and an exposed brain. Dalek's voices are electronic. When out of its casing the mutant is only able to squeak. Once the mutant is removed, the casing itself can be entered and operated by humanoids. For example, in the Daleks, Ian Chesterton enters a Dalek shell to masquerade as a guard as part of an escape plan. For many years it was assumed that, due to their design and gliding motion, Daleks were unable to climb stairs, and that this was a simple way of escaping them. A well-known cartoon from Punch pictured a group of Daleks at the foot of a flight of stairs with the caption, Well, this certainly buggers our plan to conquer the universe. In a scene from the serial Destiny of the Daleks, the Doctor and companions escape from Dalek pursuers by climbing into a ceiling duct. The fourth Doctor calls down, if you're supposed to be the superior race of the universe, why don't you try climbing after us? The Daleks generally make up for their lack of mobility with overwhelming firepower. A joke among Doctor Who fans goes, real Daleks don't climb stairs. They level the building. Dalek mobility has improved over the history of the series. In their first appearance, the Daleks, they were capable of movement only on the conductive metal floors of their city. In the Dalek invasion of Earth a Dalek emerges from the waters of the River Thames, indicating that they not only had become freely mobile, but are amphibious. Planet of the Daleks showed that they could ascend a vertical shaft by means of an external anti-gravity mat placed on the floor. Revelation of the Daleks showed Davros in his life support chair and one of his Daleks hovering, and remembrance of the Daleks depicted them as capable of hovering up a flight of stairs. Despite this, Journalists covering the series frequently refer to the Daleks' supposed inability to climb stairs. Characters escaping up a flight of stairs in the 2005 episode, Dalek, made the same joke, and were shocked when the Dalek began to hover up the stairs after uttering the phrase, elevate, in a similar manner to their normal phrase, exterminate. The new series depicts the Daleks as fully capable of flight, even space flight. Prop Details the non-humanoid shape of the Dalek did much to enhance the creature's sense of menace. A lack of familiar reference points differentiated them from the traditional, bug-eyed monster of science fiction, which Doctor Who creator Sidney Newman had wanted the show to avoid. The unsettling Dalek form, coupled with their alien voices, made many believe that the props were wholly mechanical and operated by remote control. The Daleks were actually controlled from inside by short operators who had to manipulate their eye stalks, domes, and arms. 
as well as flashing the lights on their heads in sync with the actors supplying their voices. The Dalek cases were built in two pieces. An operator would step into the lower section, and then the top would be secured. The operators looked out between the cylindrical louvers just beneath the dome, which were lined with mesh to conceal their faces. In addition to being hot and cramped the Dalek casings also muffled external sounds, making it difficult for operators to hear the director's commands or studio dialogue. John Scott Martin, a Dalek operator from the original series, said that Dalek operation was a challenge. You had to have about six hands, one to do the eye stalk, one to do the lights, one for the gun, another for the smoke canister underneath, yet another for the sink blundier. If you were related to an octopus then it helped. For Doctor Who's 21st century revival the Dalek casings retain the same overall shape and dimensional proportions of previous Daleks. Although many details have been redesigned to give the Dalek a heavier and more solid look, changes include a larger, more pointed base, a glowing eyepiece, an all-over metallic brass finish, thicker, nailed strips on the neck section, a housing for the eye stalk pivot, and significantly larger dome lights. The new prop made its on-screen debut in the 2005 episode, Dalek. These Dalek casings use a short operator inside the housing while a head and eye stalk are operated via remote control. A third person, Nicholas Briggs, supplies the voice in their various appearances. In the 2010 season a new, larger model appeared in several colors representing different parts of the Dalek command hierarchy. Movement Terry Nation's original plan was for the Daleks to glide across the floor. Early versions of the Daleks rolled on nylon casters, propelled by the operator's feet. Although casters were adequate for the Daleks' debut serial, which was shot entirely at the BBC's Lime Grove Studios, for the Dalek invasion of Earth Terry Nation wanted the Daleks to be filmed on the streets of London. To enable the Daleks to travel smoothly on location, designer Spencer Chapman built the new Dalek shells around miniature tricycles with sturdier wheels, which were hidden by enlarged fenders fitted below the original base. The uneven flagstones of central London caused the Daleks to rattle as they moved and it was not possible to remove this noise from the final soundtrack. A small parabolic dish was added to the rear of the props casing to explain why these Daleks unlike the ones in their first serial, were not dependent on static electricity drawn up from the floors of the Dalek city for their motive power. Later versions of the prop had more efficient wheels and were once again simply propelled by the seated operator's feet, but they remained so heavy that when going up ramps they often had to be pushed by stagehands out of camera shot. The difficulty of operating all the prop's parts at once contributed to the occasionally jerky Dalek movements. This problem has largely been eradicated with the advent of the new series version, as its remotely controlled dome and eye stalk allow the operator to concentrate on the smooth movement of the Dalek and its arms. Voices The staccato delivery harsh tone, and rising inflection of the Dalek voice were initially developed by voice actors Peter Hawkins and David Graham, who would vary the pitch and speed of the lines according to the emotion needed. Their voices were further processed electronically by Brian Hodgson at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Although the exact sound processing devices used have varied, the original 1963 effect used equalization to boost the mid-range of the actor's voice then subjected it to ring modulation with a 30 Hz sine wave. The distinctive harsh grating vocal timbre this produced has remained the pattern for all Dalek voices since. Besides Hawkins and Graham, notable voice actors for the Daleks have included Roy Skelton, who first voiced the Daleks in the 1967 story The Evil of the Daleks and went on to provide voices for five additional Dalek serials including Planet of the Daleks, and for the one-off anniversary special The Five Doctors. Michael Wisher, the actor who originated the role of Dalek creator Davros in Genesis of the Daleks, provided Dalek voices for that same story, as well as for Frontier in Space, Planet of the Daleks, and Death to the Daleks. Other Dalek voice actors include Royce Mills, Brian Miller, and Oliver Gilbert and Peter Messelin. John Leeson, who performed the voice of K-9 in several Doctor Who stories, and Davros actors Terry Malloy and David Goodison also contributed supporting voices for various Dalek serials. Since 2005, 
The Dalek voice in the television series has been provided by Nicholas Briggs, speaking into a microphone connected to a voice modulator. Briggs had previously provided Dalek and other alien voices for Big Finish Productions audio plays, and continues to do so. In a 2006 BBC radio interview, Briggs said that when the BBC asked him to do the voice for the new television series, they instructed him to bring his own analog ring modulator that he had used in the audio plays. The BBC's sound department had changed to a digital platform, and could not adequately create the distinctive Dalek sound with their modern equipment. Briggs went as far as to bring the voice modulator to the actors' readings of the scripts. Construction Manufacturing the props was expensive. In scenes where many Daleks had to appear, some of them would be represented by wooden replicas or life-size photographic enlargements in the early black-and-white episodes. In stories involving armies of Daleks, the BBC effects team even turned to using commercially available toy Daleks, manufactured by Louis Marx and Company and Hearts Plastic Molders Limited. Examples of this can be observed in the serials The Power of the Daleks, The Evil of the Daleks, and Planet of the Daleks. Judicious editing techniques also gave the impression that there were more Daleks than were actually available, such as using a split screen in The Parting of the Ways. Four fully functioning props were commissioned for the first serial, The Daleks, in 1963, and were constructed from BBC plans by Shawcraft Engineering. These became known in fan circles as MKI Daleks. Shawcraft were also commissioned to construct approximately 20 Daleks for the two Dalek movies in 1965 and 1966. Some of these movie props filtered back to the BBC and were seen in the televised serials, notably The Chase, which was aired before the first movie's debut. The remaining props not bought by the BBC were either donated to charity or given away as prizes in competitions. The BBC's own Dalek props were reused many times, with components of the original Shawcraft MKI Daleks surviving right through to their final classic series appearance in 1988, but years of storage and repainting took their toll. By the time of the Sixth Doctor's revelation of the Daleks new props were being manufactured out to fiberglass. These models were lighter and more affordable to construct than their predecessors. These newer models were slightly bulkier in appearance around the mid-shoulder section, and also had a redesigned skirt section which was more vertical at the back. Other minor changes were made to the design due to these new construction methods, including altering the fender and incorporating the arm boxes, collars, and slats into a single fiberglass molding. These props were repainted in grey for the Seventh Doctor serial Remembrance of the Daleks, and designated as Renegade Daleks. Another redesign, painted in cream and gold, became the Imperial Dalek faction. New Dalek props were built for the 21st century version of Doctor Who. The first, which appeared alone in the 2005 episode, Dalek, was built by model maker Mike Tucker. Additional Dalek props based on Tucker's master were subsequently built out of fiberglass by Cardiff-based specialist models. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?